If you ever find yourself lost at the start of a wipe, or maybe you just don't know how to handle going through those early quests, especially without the flea market, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to progress through all of those early game quests, as well as show you quickly what loadouts I'm using so you can power level yourself all the way to 15 and unlock the flea market. Let's get into it. Before we get any further, we have to talk about loadouts. When it comes to weapons, there's only two calibers I like to focus on, and that is the 762 PS round and the 762 by 25 AKBS. And the main reason for that is it's extremely cost effective. Both of these rounds will shred basically anyone you are engaging with, and the firearms that shoot those rounds are also very cheap. So let's look at the two weapons I use when I use the 762 by 39 PS round. That would be the VP0136 or the SKS. And I'll just go quickly into my hideout and show you at the range, just so you can see what they look like here. So these are the two guns I focus on right out of the gate. And that's because on the VP0136, you can add a Bastion and a Coyote Sight both of which you can get from skier level one, as well as the gun actually, with a 30 round mag shooting a great round. Veritas's battle buddy teaches us that 762 by 39 PS has 32 pen and 57 damage. And if you don't know how penetration works, Here's how. Ammo with 20 pen will almost always fail to pierce a tier three armor in the first shot. Obviously the closer you are to 30 pen, the higher your chances go to pierce the armor. But say you have 22 pen, chances are you're probably not gonna pierce an Antar or the 6B23 green armor on the first shot. The VPO 136 is gonna run you just over 50,000 rubles, but I personally prefer it with the 30 round magazines as well as a great sight picture right out of the gate. But of course, you can go with the cheaper option, which is the SKS. The SKS is another amazing gun right out the gate. It shoots the same round, so you gotta be expecting about the same damage. Both weapons are single fire weapons. It's up to you whether or not you want to go with the cheaper option or you want to go with the VPO. Both are good, and of course, depending on the money situation, the cheaper option might be better. The other gun, which people might find controversial, actually, maybe not, who knows, maybe there's a big fan base out there for it, is the PPSH-41. Now, the PPSH-41 is, in my opinion, a severely underrated weapon, especially right out of the gate, early wipe in Tarkov. It costs you about 26,000 rubles, and the best thing about it is, as soon as you get it, it's good to go, but the ammo, is actually very, very surprising. This AKBS round, found from level one prop or, has a plus 15% accuracy buff and a minus 15% recoil. So you take that and you put it on a gun with 1000 RPM, the PPSH-41. Let's go into the hideout here. And I whip that bad boy out, put that guy in full auto. Maybe I'm sighting a target that's just down that way. Look what happens with the low recoil of SMGs in general and this ammo right out of the gate at level one. I'm not the sickest PPSH-41 player ever, but that recoil was not hard to control. Right after the initial kind of pop, it stabilizes out extremely well and I'm shooting rounds at 1000 RPM to a target decently far away. Veritas's battle buddy tells us that this round has 12 pen and 58 damage. The round hits hard. With 12 pen, you're not gonna be penetrating a Paka on the first shot, most likely. However, because of the PPSH's insane fire rate and how controllable it is, at 1000 RPM, you are going to just decimate any armor after a few bullets. And this is even the case in late white Tarkov. I've seen people run around, you know, maybe, you know, meme kits and all with PPSH's, um, a slightly better round, mind you, but there also is much better armor late white. And they shred even late game armors, no problem with the PPSH. So in most cases, Cases, people only are gonna be walking around with that maximum tier 3 you will quickly shred that down and destroy anybody you get good shots on with the PPSH as for gear I don't want to get too in-depth with it because I want to focus on the actual XP but here's an example kit I'd be wearing everything can be achieved at level 1 obviously besides the evasion the red rebel 
and my gamma container. I tried to keep Silewas being crafted at the level one med station as soon as I have that up before 15. And if I can, I might swap the CMS out with one of the bigger survival kits, this one here. Uh, and if I can't manage to craft Silewas in time or I've been dying a lot, just throw in the cheese and replacement. I do quickly want to point out though, two good ways to get good tier three armor before 15 would be the proper trade, one propane for the 6B43, you can fire propane all over the green shelves at Ollie. I have a guide there where you can find fuel. It's the scab case guide. Any place where I show you that you can find fuel, you can also find propane there. So all of those green shelves back there, as well as this Ragman trade at level one. It is the tier three Unter armor. Both these armors repair really well. This armor only needs three energy drinks. The energy drinks you can easily find in the food corner at Goshan. I have multiple guides already showing how to get there and how to loot that area. So just feel free to look at one of those though i will also say you can buy this armor from peacekeeper loyalty 2 which you get at level 14. on your scav runs in between you can always go check for the propanes and energy drinks and get yourself some good tier 3 armor before level 15. Now the first thing we're gonna do before we even get into our first raid is take our time to go through all of the traders and examine all of the items. Those are the items that are black and white and kind of scratched out. If you actually examine every single item from all of the traders to level two before your first raid. And here's why that's important. The best way to level up to 15 is through our quests. And the first quest we're actually gonna wanna do is called introduction, which can be accepted from mechanic, but you have to be level two, which is why we examine our items. Doing the introduction quest first will help us for our other quest later. So let's get into that one. One thing I want to say really quickly is if you don't know, when you hit headshots on AI or PMC, the XP you get from that kill is more than doubled. Here is an example of what happens when you headshot a scout. As you can see, a regular kill is 100 XP, but a headshot is 220. It's more than double. And when you look at what the graph looks like when you headshot a raider, you're missing out on over 500 XP for not hitting a headshot. So when possible, it's always best to wait a second and line up a headshot to ensure you're getting way more XP over time than you normally would. Also, when it comes to player fights, I tend to stick to just questing, especially during the start of a wipe, and only really fight when I'm definitely in the favorable position. Unless I would just run away and continue with my quests. So here we are on woods, and I like to look for the massive crashed airplane just behind or to the east of the sniper rock when I'm doing Jaeger's quest because it's very easy to find his camp once you find the crashed airplane. And if you look around 9, 10 o'clock from the nose, you'll see Jaeger's camp right there. So all we're gonna need to do is run to the base of Jaeger's camp and look for a little note that will be right there just underneath the ladder. Once they have the note, all you have to do is extract and you're done. A lot of people immediately jump onto customs first and try to do the scav kills and the Salewas, but that is all the more reason why you're gonna have a great time on reserve, mostly uncontested fighting your Salewas. We're just gonna go in the white bishop building and we're gonna look along the floor and the surfaces, especially in these piles of meds, and we're gonna be looking for our Salewas. <laughs> While you are searching the white bishop rooms, if you don't have any luck, you can actually go down these stairs just here into the underground area, straight past your first door, continuing past the hallway here, and once you get to the hangar doors, first one on your left all the way in is another medical room area. As we can see, we have a Saleba right here on the ground and the shelves here, another med box. You can find a bunch more meds to get those Salewas. But one other place we're gonna look for our Salewas after having some rough luck there, is the Black Pond building. So here we are on the left side, looking at the front of the Black Pond building. We're just gonna go and head up to the second floor. And once we are on the second floor, we're gonna go down to about midway through the building and take a left around these sandbags. And we have another med area. So you wanna be looking on all these services here along all of these beds. 
There's a med bag in case you find one in there. And as well on this table here. So, no luck in slavers this time, but if you look in these places, you'll definitely find them. Here we are on customs. Now we're going to be working on our debut quest. Because we just finished introduction, we have unlocked Jaeger, so we can actually buy the two shotguns needed to complete the quest. The only thing we need to do is kill five scabs on customs. So all we're gonna do is head probably towards the compound on the eastern side of the map, or maybe the construction sites, and we are gonna look for our five scabs. One okay, well, we got one right off spawn. This crouch right off spawn, that's always a good sign. The only thing you'll probably have to worry about is, you know, of course you'll be racing against other players, especially if this is the early wipe. A bunch of people are gonna be trying to kill scabs. So you might have to be a little aggressive, more than you'd like. Okay, looks like we have a few scabs right outside here to the sniper building. The sniper military checkpoint area, we heard one. So here we are at the gas station. We should have a few more. Yes, we do. There's one there. We have another scav. Just down that way. Oh, there's another one. And actually, that's going to be our fifth. Oh, wow, there's more. There's even more scabs. Oh, we got him. Wow, look at that. It's kind of funny. But anyway, so there we have it. We've already gotten our five scabs. Sometimes scav might not spawn in all the best places, or you might have some trouble finding them. Just keep going at it, you'll get five scabs pretty quick. Now, we'll say quickly while you're getting your five scab kills, or after you've done it, before you leave the raid, you actually want to come over to the third story dorm. So here we are, we're right in front of the third story and we're just going to want to walk in and we're going to grab a key from room 205. The reason why we're doing that is because we'll need this key for the next quest that comes right after this one. So let's go ahead and walk to 205. Is it down this way? Am I boosted? Okay, I am boosted. It's down this way. 205. It's the, oh yeah, perfect. So it's the one where you have to jump on the bed you have to kind of like jump crouch into the room here. In this brown jacket will be the machinery key and we'll need that for the next quest. There it is. So now the only thing we have left to do is buy two MP133 shotguns from level one Jaeger and then we can just hand them in and quest complete. So now we are going to be doing our checking quest. Now hopefully you were able to grab the key from room 205 in the previous step while you're killing your scabs, but if not, just keep going for it, you'll get it. And now we find ourselves in the construction site on customs. So just to give you guys an idea of where we are, there is the eastern direction back toward the compound. Dorms is just over there, I know the weather is terrible, bear with me guys. <laughs> but there's the bridge over there towards Big Red. And just down that way is towards the expansion and crack house, things like that. Let me go down these steps here. Hopefully, do I break my legs off this? Okay, no. A little bit, a little bit of damage, but whatever. All good. And you're going to want to find this orange tanker right in the middle of the older construction site. So right under this building here, this sniper scout can spawn up there. And with your machinery key, all you're going to want to do is come up to the front door of the tanker. Give that a quick little open there. Look at that door unlocked experience. And the pocket watch you're going to be looking for is right here in front of the seat. Once you got the pocket watch, all you're going to have to do is run to extraction and you're done the quest. The next quest we're going to be working on is delivery from the past. And that involves grabbing a secure folder from Big Red on customs. Here we are in front of Big Red. As you can see, we're looking around. It's hard to miss. It's hard to miss, for sure. I will also say quickly that in order to grab this secure case, you're gonna need the Tarcones Director's office key. Now, there's a few ways you can get this. You can get this off scav bags or pockets. So whenever you kill a scav, especially if you're doing some of the scav kill quests from earlier, you're gonna wanna check the pockets to see if you can find this key. You can find these in filing cabinets. Now, a really easy and effective way to grab this key is to actually do the barter trade from Therapist. You're gonna need green tea, army crackers, and squash. The green tea and squash you can easily find in the Goshen food loot run. I have a few videos showing that location, as well as we'll be going there actually for a Yager quest later on in this video. And the crackers you can just buy from Therapist. 
So if you just go that route, you'll very easily get this key and then we can proceed with this quest. So after we have the Tarkon director's office key, all we're gonna do is run into Big Red, like so. We're gonna fly our way up the staircase here. Let's go all the way up to the top. Then we're gonna have to give this door a quick little jingle. Wow, my hand did something weird there. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, we want to go to the last door and give it a quick little breach situation. And after we've breached, we want to look behind the desk and the office document will be right here on the shelf beneath the laptop. I will also say while we're here, there's an Intel spawn in the garbage can, okay? Listen, I'm just trying to make you money. Now after you get the folder from the office in customs, you're actually gonna have to bring it to factory and stash it in a, well, metal room, to be honest. Just to give you an idea of where we are, there is the gate three extraction, just that door. Right up there is the factory office area. All we're gonna wanna do is bring that secure case right up these metal steps here into this little shack right outside the office area and we're just gonna have to sit in here and stash it. I always like to just rush this. I just carry the document on me. If I spawn close to it, I rush it, get that thing planted as soon as I can to avoid PMCs killing me so I don't have to go back to customs to get it. However, if you have tried it a couple times, you've been gotten unlucky, you can try this at night, especially early wipe and just hide in a dark corner, wait till things cool down, run over and stash the case or if you're like me, maybe the first time or first few times you try it, you just go balls to the wall and just rush this shack and try to get that document planted. But once you get that document planted, even if you die after, all you have to do is survive a factory raid and the quest is complete. So the next quest we're gonna be working on, and you can kind of do this one passively while you're doing the other quests, is ice cream cones. And for that, we're gonna need to hand in three 60 round mags. So the first spot I like to look is on woods. There's the scav house just down there, the black car down the main road. And just down the main road, if you follow it, is the military checkpoint area where you can get that purple key card. We're gonna wanna go to the ZB014 bunker. So if you run just to the right of the scav house here towards this fence, we're going to be looking for a bunch of rocks just down this way, or sorry, I think it's just down this way. Actually, yep, there it is. The green flares is a great indicator of where the bunker is, but the green flares might not be there every time because they're only there when the extract is open. And I will also say that you're going to need the ZB014 key to actually unlock the door where the 60 round mags spawn. You can find this key basically just in scav pockets, bags, or filing cabinets, I don't think there's a dedicated spawn for this key. If you find it before this quest, you definitely wanna be coming to woods to check for this spot. So we're gonna run into the bunker here. And I've already unlocked the door. Here's the door right here you unlock. And we're just gonna to wanna to look on these surfaces here, all on the ground in front of it. Actually, we have a 60 rounder right there. So there's one 60 round magazine. And we're gonna look in all these weapon boxes services and on the floor around here. If you don't have the ZB014 key or you're just having no luck, there's a few other good places you can get these 60 rounders. And that is off Rishala on customs. Him and his goons are a great source for 60 round mags. They carry them quite often, but really any of the scab bosses can do it. You can get these off of Blue Har's minions. Killa actually has a lot of 60 round mags, but Killa's like insane this way. So fighting him could be a little tough, especially early white. Or scab raiders are a great source so areas like reserve where they can spawn underground or in the hangars or of course on labs if you're familiar with labs and you know how to farm the raiders there you could very easily get these 60 round magazines off the raiders i do also want to emphasize that you want to be looting every single weapon box you could find along the way because those 60 round magazines has a chance of spawning all of them if you do all those things as you're doing your other quests, you should find the 60 rounders, no problem. Next, we are on interchange, and here we are going to be doing our sanitary standards part one and two. I'm gonna show you everywhere you can find those gas analyzers. However, if you do want a more in-depth guide on where the gas analyzers are, you can look at my therapist guide to finding every item for therapist. And there I break down specifically where you can find every gas analyzer. Currently right now, we are at the front of Ollie and the first place I'm gonna look for my gas analyzers is all of these shelves right next to the cash registers. So all these ones at the front of the store has a chance to see gas analyzers. Now I like to look 
along the edges because if you look along the edges you can kind of look down the shelves and you'll notice if anything's on them The next place I'm going to be looking for my gas analyzers is the Texo, right underneath the tech light right there, just outside the front of Ollie. I'm going to be looking along all of these shelves, making sure we get our loot indicator everywhere, just in case there's an item we might not see with the darkness. The third place we'll be looking for our gas analyzers is the tech light. Now we saw a little bit at the start of Texo. We just ran up the escalator. There's the Texo there and the Ollie is just down that way. So all we did was run up the escalator and we're going to look along all of these shelves. Actually, we can see one right away. Again, we're gonna follow the same principle. We're gonna get our loot indicator everywhere just to make sure we're not missing anything. The fourth place we're gonna look for our gas analyzers is the Rasmussen. So we just walked down the escalator from Tech Light. There's the Tex over there and the Ollie. Same principle here. We're gonna look on all of these surfaces for our gas analyzers. They could be on any one of these tables. Look inside the boxes. As you can see, caps spawned right there. And we couldn't see those without looking in the boxes. So look in all the boxes, all the surfaces. Get that loot indicator everywhere and see if we can find those gas analyzers. Now here we are in front of German. It's kind of hard to see. It's dark and interchange. Right across from the Mantis, there's the central part of the mall there. We're gonna wanna walk in this store and look on all of these shelves and surfaces, this little corner box here, to look for those gas analyzers. Here we are at TTS, which is directly across from Emmercom. There's the German store in the center of the mall where we just were. And all of these shelves at the front also have a spawn of gas analyzers. So you can be checking all of these tables and along these metal shelves can also spawn them. And finally, the last place we're gonna be looking for our gas analyzers is in the IDEA computer room. We wanna be looking along these tables here at the front on this desk here then we're going to go all the way back down to the end on top of this box where the motor is and along these two shelves on the left side of the room and spawn your gas analyzers yep there's one there nothing spawns on the other side so don't bother with that but as you can see checking all those places we got our three gas analyzers and that's exactly how many you need to complete Sanitary Standards Part 1 and 2. So after checking these spots, you'll be good to go. Now let's focus on our acquaintance quest from Jaeger. Now of course, when you're doing this quest, we're also going to be on interchange. So while you're looking for your gas analyzers, feel free to also check this area for food. We're going to be looking in the back of Goshan for the MLI croutons and the beef stew. Here we are at the front of Goshan. On the left side, if you're looking towards the back, and we're gonna check out these food aisles that is just covered and food. And here's also the spot we can be looking for our green tea and squash for the director's office key if you haven't found that already. So let's go along here and check these back shelves. There's one Dushanka already. Look all along here, there's an energy drink. Now remember that energy drink is gonna be good for our armor barter. There's another big Dushanka right there. We're gonna walk along all these shelves and I'll catch up with you after we look through everything. Okay, so here's what we collected. We have three cans of Tushanka, so we have enough to hand in for the quest. 
We have some max energies, which would be good for that untar barter if you're interested in that. We found squash, which is one of the things we need for that director's office key. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get any croutons or the green tea, but both of those items are very commonly found here. We just got unlucky this time. You'll get everything you need for the acquaintance quest for Jaeger, except for the Iskra lunch boxes, which I'll show you right now. If you run to the other side of Goshan, we were just down that side earlier. We're going to want to walk through these orange doors on the right side of Goshan. If you walk through the orange doors, go all the way through these sets of doors as well. Run straight through the computer office. We have a black weapon box. Now, there's two black weapon boxes here that have a 100% chance to spawn the Iskra green lunch boxes. So this is actually a very easy item to get. And it's this one right under the staircase. So if you look in here, you'll see probably the first item. There it is. And the second one is if you just go up the stairs from the first. And we go through these orange doors down the hallway to the end. We're going to take a right. And it's not that weapon box, but this one right here next to these boxes also spawns the Iskra lunchbox. You will not have to look for long to find these. The only thing is you'll have to get there before someone else does. Typically, not many people loot this area. It just might be a little harder while other people are also looking for those lunchboxes. With that, you should be able to hand all the food in and you're done the acquaintance quest for Jaeger. So our next few quests are going to be on customs. And this is when I like to look for the 3M body armor and the Taz for the supplier quest for Skier. As I'm doing these next three quests that I'll get into shortly, just constantly be on the lookout for scavs. Make sure you're getting those headshots for that XP. And as soon as you find the Taz and the body armor, I would just leave the raid, run it back because you don't want to be dying after fighting those sometimes. You can get very lucky and find it immediately. Sometimes it takes a little bit to find. Of course, if you found any of those two items earlier on, I would just leave the raid and hand them in as soon as you can. Now that we're going to be on custom for our next few quests, that's when I like to look for them. The next quest we're going to focus on is BP Depot. And we're going to have to mark four fuel tanks on customs. So the first one's in front of me right here. We're at the gas station just outside of the compound. So you're going to have to take a marker to each one of these tankers and just mark them and then you'll be done. So here we are at the old gas station. You can see the other tanker is just right there. Here's the compound, just to give you guys a good little overview of what you're looking for. So all you're gonna wanna do is run up to that tanker, just like the other ones, and plant your marker. The third tanker we're gonna mark, which you might recognize from the bronze pocket watch quest, is right in the middle of old construction. Take a quick look around, there are the sniper towers, and here's the double smokestack sniper scav spawn. We're just gonna walk up, and mark it just like the others. And the last tank you will be marking for the quest is all the way on the western edge of customs, right in between the trailer park extract and the crossroads extract. So we're gonna plant our final marker and just a thing of note, make sure you wait for the, I think it's a 30 second timer to expire before you leave the raid or else you'll have to remark the last tanker. Don't make that mistake, like I did one time. And now we're finished with BP Depot. The next quest we're gonna be working on is Extortionist from Skier. All we're gonna have to do is grab a secure container from a cabin, but first we'll need to grab a key that spawns on customs. Here we are at the Ruaf roadblock. There's construction over there, and over there is Big Red. We're just gonna walk this way towards these bushes, and there'll be a body just dead in here. This is a static spawn, and every time this guy will spawn the unknown key. The only thing is, he only spawns one, so you have to get it first, but with the amount of custom mains you'll be doing, there's no doubt you'll get it. And once we have the customs key, we're gonna want to run over to the eastern side of the map towards the compound. Okay, so here we are in the eastern compound of customs. You can see the gas station is just over there, right in the big middle construction area. The cabin we're looking for is just right here under the legs of the blue crane. Once unlocked, we just have to walk into the cabin and under this sheet is where you'll find your document. Once you got the document, all you have to do now is extract, hand it in a skier and you're good to go. Now the next quest we're gonna be working on is called Golden Swag 
also from Skier. The first thing we're gonna need to do this is the Dorms 303 key. You can find this key in the same places you can find all the others, which is in the scav bags, pockets, filing cabinets, or jackets. But also another really great way to get this key is the barter from Therapist. You're gonna need to find blue tape and T-plugs. Both of these items can commonly be found in technical supply crates, which are very common on woods. So if you're really struggling to get this key from scavs and the sorts, feel free to go on woods and loot those supply crates and you'll find a lot of T-plugs and blue tape. Once you have this key, we're just gonna walk up to the third floor of the third story dorms. And once we are up here, we're just gonna head to our right and the room we are looking for is this gated room right next to the wardrobe. Let's get that open. And the golden lighter you can find will be right next to the candles right here. Once you have the golden lighter, all we're gonna need to do is go to the little trailer park area. There is the big red just behind us. And over there is the actual trailer park extract. We're just gonna have to open this door with the trailer park portable cabin key, but luckily for us, Skier provides it to you. So don't forget to bring that. And we can just finally open this cabin. And all we're gonna have to do is plant the lighter like we plant the other items and you're done the quest. All right, guys, now we're finally getting to the last stretch of things. And first of all, I just want to say, if you've been watching from the start of the video up until this point, you're cute as hell. Thank you. But we got more quests to do. The one we're going to be working on now is bad rep evidence. And why we're on factory real quick is because we're actually going to need the portable bunkhouse key. Now, there is a dedicated spawn for this key in factory. It's going to require you to have the factory exit key. But I'm going to show it to you nonetheless, just in case. So if you open up this locked room, the gated room here, under this brown jacket, actually, it spawns right here on the ground. I personally like to get the key through scav bags or pockets. I don't seem to have issue finding it just from scavs. I think it's a pretty common drop, as usually by the time I have this quest, I just have this key. Keep trying, you'll definitely get it. But once you have the portable bunkhouse key, you're going to want to come to the construction site on customs. So most of you are probably familiar with this area by now. There is the tanker. We got the bronze pocket watch from and the bigger building. Here's the double smokestack sniper scav area. Just in this big opening, as you can see where dorms is right there, we're gonna walk up these metal steps and unlock the bunkhouse. Once we have unlocked the bunkhouse, we're gonna walk inside to our right and the document you're gonna want is gonna be right here by this book that's kind of leaning in the corner. Once you have the document, all you have to do is round of the raid and extract, head into property and you're good to go. So the next quest we're gonna be working on is chemical part one. So here we are in customs. We are right next to the double smoke stack building and the blue van where you can unlock the PCs. We're just gonna wanna walk into the open train cart and we're gonna look for two items in here. One of them is gonna be the dorms 220 key, which can spawn right here by these books. And the other is the secure document you're gonna need to hand in that spawns right in this corner. I know it's dark, but unfortunately this SKS does not have a flashlight, it just has a laser. So you're gonna grab the key and the document now, we'll say the key might not always be in there. That is where the key spawns, but if it's not there, you're gonna be looking, as always, in the scab bags and pockets. But once you have the keys and document, all you have to do is lead the raid and hand them both into Skier. But don't worry, you'll get that key back for Chemical Part 2. All right, guys, so now we're gonna be working on Chemical Part 2. Now, you're gonna need the Dorms 220 key, so don't forget to claim that from Skier once you start the quest, because he'll give you back the key you gave to him in Chemical Part 1. And once you have that key, we're gonna go to the third story dorm. So as you can see here, we're in the central courtyard. We're gonna walk into the third story dorms. We're gonna go to the second floor. Then we're gonna take a left. Once we get into the big open area, we're gonna take the right path and we're gonna be looking for this gated door on the right. So we're gonna go ahead and lock that gated door. Once the door is unlocked, we're looking for two things. The document can be found in this pile of books here. And the USB we're gonna need in the computer is found right here plugged in. Once you have those two items, all you have to do is leave customs and extract and hand them in scare and you're done. So the next two quests we're going to be working on is Bunker Part 1 and 2. For the sake of you guys following along, if you want to, I'm going to start this outside of Black Pond, where we were earlier in the video. All we're going to want to do is run into Black Pond, down these steps. We're going to take first door on our left and open it to the underground. Then we're going to run all the way down to the Welcome to Hell and down these stairs. 
Once we're down these stairs, we're going to walk into the bigger open area and take our first right toward these like power stations. Once we're done that, we're gonna keep down the hallway and open the first door on our left. And once we're in here, we are now in the control room. Just in case you didn't get the objective, you can shoot the glass, walk in here, walk out. By this point, you've definitely had the objective. All you have to do now is walk out and extract. I will say if you die doing this quest, you will have to come back to the control room. It doesn't save the state like some other quests do. All right guys, so now we're gonna be working on bunker part two and all we're gonna have to do for this quest is touch every hangar door to all of the marked buildings on the map. We are underground and we're exactly in the same doorway we just came in through in bunker part one. So there's Black Pond, first door on the left. Now we're here. Once you get to this point, you'll obviously hit the Black Pond hangar doors. By default, next thing we're gonna do is turn to the right. I'm gonna run all the way down, and the first door we're gonna need is right here, which is the Black Bishop. So we're gonna go in, touch this area. Once you get the objective, you come back, and we're gonna keep going along the route. The next door we're looking for is all the way down in this water, and that is the White Bishop. So we're gonna go all the way through the water here. Once you get to the end of the water where you see these boards, we can walk right up here. And at this point, you should have the objective. After this, we're gonna run down across the water through this doorway here. Once you go through this door, you're gonna to wanna to go right up these stairs. And once up here, you wanna run in and make sure you touch the hangar doors. And now you've gotten the White King. After the White King, you wanna run down the stairs again and run directly up this hallway. At the top of the ramp through the doorway, you just wanna hit a left. And first door on your right will be the white pawn, your last objective. Once you hit all the hangar doors, all you have to do is extract from the raid and you're finished the quest. All right, guys, so the last quest we're going to be doing in raid is chemical part three. Now, here we are once again in the factory office area. All we're going to need to do is walk up to the third floor. So we're just going to head down the hallway here to this white door next to these wooden shelves. And what we're going to do is breach it. A lot of people don't know, you can actually just breach the door. You don't actually need a key for this. And the chemicals that we're gonna need for skier are gonna be located in this filing cabinet. The chemicals should be in the top drawer right here in this crevice. And once you have the chemicals, all you need to do now is run out of the room and extract and you're done. The last two quests we'll be looking at in this video is Gunsmith Part 1 and 2. Now, if you're not already level 15 by now, the last two Gunsmith quests will surely be enough to get you there. For Gunsmith 1, you're going to need a MP133 shotgun, which you can actually buy from Jaeger. The only thing we need now to complete Gunsmith 1 is the pistol grip, the 133 rail with an RK6 and a blue laser, because it's the cheapest. Then we're going to need a cylinder 12 and on top of that the GK02. You can buy most of these items with the exception of two so let's get into those. The 133 custom four stock you can actually get from mechanic one. It's for a barter trade. All you're gonna need is one HDD which you can easily find if you run the gas analyzer route while you're looking for the gas analyzers for therapists so refer to that part of the video if you do want to find the hard drive. And the other item you can't buy is the GK02. One place I like to look for the muzzle brick is actually on woods in the USEC camp. And that's just simply because the USEC camp has so many attachment spawns. So as you can see, we have some on this table. We're gonna run around to the back here. And we have another table full of weapon attachments as well as a few weapon crates. I think I just missed one down this way. Yep, there's the big one right there. And then after we check those spots, we're gonna run down across to the other camp. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look in all the weapon boxes and the weapon attachment spawns. Ooh, a little hop there. So there's one weapon box right there. We're gonna look on all of these surfaces here. 
We'll look at all of these surfaces. We have another weapon box right there. So feel free to run these attachment spawns to see if you can find that muzzle break. If not, another good place to get them is whenever a shotgun scav is shooting at you, he has a chance, if he's using an MP33, to have that muzzle break on the end of that scav gun. Whenever you see a shotgun scav early wipe, you definitely want to kill those and then check their shotguns for that muzzle break. If you see it, I recommend you get the heck out of the raid because you don't know when you're going to see another one of those before 15. Once you have all the parts, simply put the gun together and hand it into mechanic. And now for the last quest, Gunsmith Part 2. All we're going to need is an AKS 7-4U from Proper 1. The only thing the AKS is going to need is the SB-8 pistol grip, the CAC vertical foregrip, the B-11 handguard, and a 60 round magazine. Everything you can buy from loyalty level 1 traders except for the 60 round magazine. If you watch the ice cream cone part of the video, you would already know where to find these 60 round magazines. And if you haven't, I would just go to that section to know where to find these things. Once you have all the parts, all you're gonna need to do is fold the gun before you hand it in or as it won't be accepted because it has to be no more than six squares. Once the gun is folded, hand it in and you're done gunsmith part two. Well everyone, now you should know how to do all the early game quests and where to find every item you need to get to level 15 pretty quickly. This is by far the biggest video I've ever done, so I hope you riff raps enjoy it. And if there's anything else you wanna know about Escape from Tarkov, feel free to pop into my Twitch or write a comment down below what you'd like to see next and I'll throw it in the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, like seriously, and I'll see you in the next one.